Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at hypotheses and this is what we discussed in the previous video that uh, we'll be using to make our testing much more fun again. Uh, this is going to be also the last tool that we are going to check and from the next video, we'll be looking at uh, Django REST framework API views, setting them up and doing various testing with authentication, permissions, as well as the different generic API views. But as I said in the previous video, one of the reasons as to why I decided to do this testing is because of this package called Hypothesis, which in my opinion, I believe is awesome. So let's dive straight into it. So currently, uh, we did 100% code coverage and according to the test we wrote, we saw that all our code is tested and all our code is okay, but is it really okay? So currently, for example, we have this test which is talking about, we are testing if the student has failed. And remember, I think in our models we said any students who get anything below 40, pass, 40 marks is, is a fail. Uh, but where is the problem? Now, the problem lies in one thing. The value that we are passing on here, this 29, uh, is always a static value. And this means this value never changes today, tomorrow, going forward. And it's, uh, our test will always test this value. But our test, we've said that, for example, that the, the grades uh, for fail are between zero and uh, 40 marks. So this is one problem. It only tests one value. So the way we solve that is using hypothesis. So we import this package of first we install it and we are going to do that in the code. Uh, and we import a couple of things from hypothesis that we'll be using quite often. One is called given settings and strategies. But what is hypothesis? So hypothesis, what it does is it finds edge cases in our code that otherwise in our minds we wouldn't have thought to look for. In this case, we've only put here 29 because in our minds we think any person who is going to input the scores will input something between 0 and 40. But that's usually never the case in the real world. So the, the way hypotheses work is that we pass this given, uh, we pass at given and this is a decorator. And what decorators do basically is they usually design patterns that allows us to inject or to change the behavior of our tests or a function, beg your pardon, uh, decorators help us to, uh, to, to adjust the behavior of certain tests. In this case, for hypothesis, what at given does, it, it generates, inside these brackets, it generates a value, and that value is then passed on to the, to the function. And this is, so for example, if we pass in some value here, so that value is going to get injected uh, we are going to pass that value inside this test student fail, like so. And so effectively what we'll do is that instead of 29, we can replace that with some value. So that means with hypothesis, we can be able to generate some random values be and between certain targets, let's say between 0 and 40, and we always pass a random value to our test, and that now PyTest will be asserting with random values all the time. Okay, uh, and, but in, in, let me just go back, but some value hypothesis gives us a lot of things. So using what are called strategies, uh, we can be able to generate float numbers, we can be able to, and with float numbers, we always pass some arguments inside the st.floats, but we can also pass in integers, we can pass in characters, we can pass in booleans, we can pass in basically every data type conceivable in your head, you can be able to generate and pass it. And also hypothesis gives us the opportunity to generate our own custom types. So for example, going back to the floats, one of the things we can do for this test is that uh, we can define a minimum value and a maximum value inside the st.floats. And so every time for this test, there's going to be a random value. And this is a float number between zero and 40. And this, in this case, we've said 39.99. And that value will be, can be 0 0.1, 0 0.00001. It can be 12 point, you know, you know, it can be, is literally maybe a million values that can be generated there. 
Um, another thing we can be able to do using the settings is above this, we can also put some t settings and we can generate not just one value, but we can generate, let's say, five values and test that uh, with this test. Again, we are going to see that in the code. Yeah, so in, finally, this is how our test is going to look like. And so without further ado, let me jump straight to the code. So I'm going to come here to, the, to our code. So what I need to do is I need to pip install hypothesis. Okay, give it a second. And is it, as it does that, allow me quickly to come to our models. There's one more field I, I need to add to. Uh, I need to add one more um, field here in our classroom. And we are just going to see the sense out of it when we do the test. So I'm going to call this, let me just call it username, or we can call it slug field. Uh, and basically what we can do, actually instead of, do I do it here or do I do it for the student? Which one makes sense? Um, let me do it uh, for the student. So let's say, uh, we are going to take the first name of a student and we are going to generate a username like a Twitter handle or an Instagram handle. So we can say username and we can say this is models dot. There's a slug field that's usually generated um, and perhaps we can also put maybe this blank is equals to true. Null is equals to true. And the way this slug field usually works is that um, whenever we save, so we say dev save, this will take self, I believe. And it will also take um, hugs. Again, I'm only adding this so that we can have some more fields to test and so that you can also see the essence of using hypothesis. Um, and basically what we do is we say, self.slug is equals to, there's a function called slugify, and we put self dot, let's say first name. And so we do, usually whenever you do dev save or, you know, clean, there's a super function to return everything. And we return the, the student class, you always return the student class followed by self. Then this other part is usually standard, is save hugs and uh, keywords. So if you've used Django a lot, this is something that we'll always do. I believe we need to import the slugify. So I believe it's from django.utils import. No, django.utils.text import slugify perfect okay and so just to say that uh anything everything works i'm going to run server this is a short short format that i use so for you you have to say python manage.py run server i just want to make sure that everything is set okay so everything is set just to make sure i'm going to python manage.py make migrations and we make sure to migrate because of the new uh, okay so now oops now let's go back to the code so 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 far so good everything in our test whenever we run pytest we see that all our tests are passing uh, I'm just going to run that on the side, but as it does that, let's come back here and actually check our tests and add hypothesis and see what we are able to get. So for example, we said dev test grade fail. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to say at given and I, oops, is capital. First I need to import them. So from here I'm going to say from hypo, oops, capital from hypothesis, import strategies as ST, and we also need given for now. Okay, so we say at given, and I'm going to walk you step by step. 
And here, let's say we, um, we say strategies dot. We want to pass an integer. Um, no, actually, let me do a float, sd dot floats. And I'm going to pass on a random value. OK, it's telling me uh, it's, this is a decorator for turning a test function that accepts arguments to a randomized. OK. So and here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass. Uh, what you do is that you pass in uh, a variable here. You can call it x. You can call it some value. You can say fail score. It can be anything you want to name it. Again, here, I know common sense will, di will dictate that you say, for example, fail score is equals to that. So then you can pass this into this. But again, as we said, given will always return a value. And that value, you can call it anything. That value will get injected to this variable that you pass on here. So if we come here, for example, and we print, uh, we've called it fail score. And I'm going to say this is fail score. And let me just make this test fail so that we can have something printed on the console. So I'm going to clear my terminal. And I'm going to, let me just run this individual test itself alone. OK, so I'm going to come here, output. I'm going to come to the Python test log. It's doing the test. It's telling us that one test has failed. Let's see if it's printed out. Um, OK. It's giving us an error. It's saying, hypothesis error, invalid argument. You have applied at given to a method in test. OK. Um, but this class does not inherit from the supported versions of Hypothesis extra Django. We make sure that this is running a separate database transaction. So out of curiosity, I'm first of all going to, to do this. And I'm going to make sure that uh, I'm going to return to the terminal. This is a problem. I'm going to return to the terminal here. I've saved. I'm going to do PyTest. Let me see where the error is. OK, so, okay, so I needed to convert this to be a PyTest model. So I mean a PyTest class. So it's saying assertion fail. Of course, it has failed. But here you can see that um, it has given us a fail score of is 0, 0.0. So here it has generated a value, and it's generated it to be 0, 0.0. So and here it's saying 0, 0.0, this is a fail score, 1.1. .1, so it's generating random values. You can see here it has generated 0, 1.1, .1, 0, 0.33. It has generated negative th So it's generating very random numbers and this is the essence so instead of just hard coding 29 it's going to generate a lot of values for us to test awesome so this means that this is being passed so here instead of doing 10 we can just come and say fail score and now here we return the normal test let's see if this passes so if we come back here and run pytest i expect this to fail it can pass you know the probability of it failing and passing is you know uh cannot be measured because it's random values, but I expect here for some reason for it to fail. Okay, so we say we have one failed test. It's because it's generated all these values. So of course, when it's generated 40, 40 is not a fail score, or maybe it is. 38, this is correct, this is correct. When it's generated, this one is wrong. Of course, this is not a fail score because it's not even in the 100. Uh, it's not between 0 and 100. So this is awesome. So to make sure that uh, we generate values, remember here in our models, we said that uh, uh, we need values between 0 and 40. So what I'm going to do is uh, I can start and say max value 
is equals to 40. So I, I'm telling hypothesis here that make sure that you don't generate values that are beyond 40. 40. So, okay. So I'm going to clear and I'm going to run PyTest again. So here it's going to make sure it is generated a value and this value is not more than 40. Let's see if it's going to pass now. Okay. Yes, and it has passed. Uh, but I'm going to run it again. Again, the thing with hypothesis is that it keeps generating random values. So you might actually find some tests failing after a couple of days after you've run a lot of tests. Okay, so that one seems to be passing. Okay. One of the things I needed to do here, for example, is I need to make sure that the score is above zero. So I need to do that. I just realized that I needed to do this to make sure that the test is, of course, you cannot get a negative grade. And now if I come here and run the test, and this is one of the good things with testing, if you don't do this then, or if you don't run tests, you'll never realize some of these errors. So let's see. And what do you know? We actually now have a failing test, but why is it uh, failing? You can see here, it has put a value of zero, but it is failing. And it's saying it's supposed to be an error. So when you put a grade of zero, it's coming to error and not fail. But why is that the case? So this is, uh, if you look with your naked eye without uh, noticing, you realize that here we've said a grade must be greater than zero. But when you put zero, it's failing. This is because we actually need to put it greater than or equal to. Because if a student gets nothing, then that's zero. So we need to put greater than or equal to so that the test can pass. And again, some of these errors are difficult to find if you're not using hypothesis. So again, we run the test. Let's see if it's going to pass. Okay, it's failing again. And why is that? So for example here, it's come and put um, zero. It's also put some negative values. And you can see all the failing values here. So like for example, this has passed, but I can assure you that these negative values are failing. So, but why are negative values failing? Is because here we need to put a minimum value. So one of the things now that we can be able to do is that we can be able now to tell our front end people that, hey, if you come here and put a grade that is negative, remember here in the average score, what if somebody goes to the system and puts a negative value? That means that this test will always fail. And again, it's very difficult to know these edge cases until you do testing. So one of the ways you can prevent people from entering, uh, from entering negative values is, for example, uh, Django has these validators, and you can say validators is equals to, let's say I'm going to call it my function. I'm going to call it my function. And here I can come and do define my function. And this takes in, let's say, a value. And again, I'm just freestyling here. And we can say, for example, if my if value is less than zero, then maybe we can raise uh, a validation error. Actually, let me just Google on uh, if I come here to Django. Yeah, so you can do something like this where you can pass a validator, and this is supposed to be an array like so. Then you can define a, a function like this that takes a value. Then if the value is, actually, let me just copy this. And I'm going to say this is validate negative. Again, unless you do testing, you'll never realize these errors that you need. Uh, and params is not positive. And we can say if value is less than, yeah, if value is less than zero, 
raise the validation error, we need to import that. Actually, I'm, I'm going to copy these two as they are. I'm going to paste them here. Okay, now we can run our test again. Let's see if it's going to pass. Yeah, of course, it's, it still fails. So uh, to capture that in our tests, we need here now to say the minimum value, and we say this is equals to zero, and maximum value is equals to 40. Okay, now at least now our test should be passing. But again, the reason I put this here is so that you can just make sure that when somebody is putting values manually in the database, uh, they don't put a negative value. And now our tests are passing. Okay, let's do that with, I'm just going to copy this as, as that runs again. And I'm going to paste it here. Uh, this is pass, and for passing test, we need uh, we need between 40 and 70. So again, here we'll say the minimum value is 40, and the maximum value is 70. Okay. I'm going to run this again, and let's see if we are going to get an error. Again, looking at this by your naked eye, you might think like everything is okay, but let's see. And I deliberately put it this way so that uh, to bring out the advantages of using hypothesis. And now the test is failing. Why? So if we come here, oops, oops, okay. Oh, oh okay, we need to pass in a value. So here we are going to say pass grade, and instead of 60, we are going to pass on the pass grade. Okay. Let's run that, oops, PyTest. And something is failing, it's saying it's getting an error, uh, but it's expected a pass. And here if you look at uh, the value that it passed was 40. So how come when you pass in exactly 40, 40 marks, it's saying it's an error. So if you come here, this one we put less than 40, and this one we are saying if it's greater than 40. So that means if you put 40, where does it, is it in the fail or is it in the return pass? So here we need to put it like so, if the value is greater than or equal to 40. So that means if you get zero up to 39.99% is a fail. If you get 40 and above, then that's a pass. Again, the value 40 was lying in between these two. That's why we are getting an error. Again, without hypothesis, this is difficult to get. Again, because it's generating a lot of random numbers, so it's even easier to get errors that are in the decimal uh, categories. So let this fail. I mean, let now everything passes. As you would assume, if we did the same now to to the next test of uh, excellent, uh, we are going to call this uh, excellent. Again, we can call it anything we want. Excellent uh, grade. And now instead of passing this, and here minimum value is 70, and maximum value should be 100. Is that so? Yeah, 70 and 100. So again, if we run this, probably hypothesis will test all the values from 70.000 all the way to 100, and we expect at least one of them to fail. Let's see. Again, it has failed, and we can see here, it gave us an error instead of excellent. You can see here it's grade 70. So whenever it generates 70 exactly, it fails, and now if we put that, Let's see. Yep, 
everything should pass. And again, the last thing we are going to do is the error. So error we are going to say is, oops. Since we've already captured all the grades, since we've captured all the grades that are, are below even zero, so here we can just put a minimum value and we can pass this as a error grade. So instead of one, one is going to generate random values above 100. Let's see if it's going to fail and most probably it might. Let's see. Or it might not, I'm not sure here. Everything passes, let me try again. Okay, everything seems to pass, so cool. So, oh, oops. So the, the next thing we'll be doing in the interest of time is uh, I'm going to test this username. And the reason I'm putting username here is, let's say a student signs in with the word, with, and the first name is Tom, so we can generate a slug field which is called Tom, uh, and a last name, uh, or if your name is whatever, we can generate a slug field. So to, do, to test that, I think I'm just going to come and copy the first test. This one, like so, and I'm going to say, again, I'm not even sure that this one will fail. I'm just doing it out of interest, actually. Test Slugify, I'm just going to call it Test Slugify. And here we are, I want to pass in a random character. So, so um, this one now will be, it won't have this. I'm just going to say st dot, uh, I believe is characters or text. You can use characters or text. So, and here I'm going to pass in, I'm just going to call it name and instead of Tom, I'm going to call it name and expect. So here, since we have a random name, uh, the only way we can be able to test this, uh, I want to assert that um, maybe, um, student result dot username dot length. Now, how do we measure length in? Uh, so, if I take the length of this one, should be equal to the length of name. Okay, let's see how this one works. Clear this one, run PyTest. So what I'm doing is effectively, uh, so if your username is, let's say, Michael uh, with a capital M, I expect that, of course, your username will be in small caps, Michael, and they are going to be equal. So again, this passes, I mean, this fails. Um, Let's see why. Okay, it's a lot of error messages because again, hypothesis is generating a lot of um, is generating a lot of uh, what are they called options. So let it finish. Then we can look at the errors. So okay, all those errors. Let's go all the way back to the top. To the top. Okay, it's saying we cannot execute this. I'm going to clear this. I'm going to clear this. Let's see. Let me perhaps do student one dot save. Just to make sure it's saved. Last assert length. Is this how we measure the length in Python? Let me check. Length of Okay, 
Okay. I also wonder if this one we need to say string. Maybe that's why it's failing. Dot username is equals to length of characters. This will always be a string anyway. Um, okay. Let me look at length of string. Okay. Okay, so just to test this, I'm going also to come here and say uh, print name. I'm going to call it name. Let's run PyTest again. Again, I'm just shooting in the dark here to see if it's going to get errors because there's a point I want to bring across and also test characters. Um, oh, by the way, as that fails, um, if, if you want this uh, to, to read the documentation is in hypothesis.readthedocs.io. You can come here and you can look at installation, uh, what it is about. You can look at uh, hypothesis for Django users. This is where we are at now. Oh, okay. One of, remember when we deleted the test case? I've just remembered something. So here we can import uh, from, okay, from hypothesis uh, dot extra dot Django import test case and we can pass on this test case. Okay, this is the advantage of reading documentation. So what this test case is, is it's going to overwrite it it's a superset of this default test case. And so we can let that go. So it takes the normal Django.test and adds more features into it. So we can return our old test case. Okay. Another thing we need to, um, so if you come to read here, so you'll see some of the examples of what they do, but let's come to, yeah. So, okay. So our tests have finished running. And you can see it's saying it has asserted that the length of, where is that? The length of the result we've got, uh, it was ex expecting for it got one. And if you can look at here closely, instead of just generating common names, remember when we were using Mixer, like here, and we said student, when we logged the second name, it was generating actual names of people like Jeffrey or Jonathan, it was Mixer, gives you values that are common. But here, hypotheses have generated all these random names. And it, this is failing because it's put some, these are called Unicode characters, it has put ASCII characters, it's going to put emojis. And so this is something I realized one time when I was building another app. So that means if a student, if in these models, instead of a student writing their own name, they put just emojis, then that means you'll never get a username. And think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I can show you as an example. So uh, if I come here and uh, let me just copy this so that I can finish up. So if I come here and run my server, then I open localhost 8000 admin. Okay, it seems I need to create a super user, python manage.py, create super user. So I'm going to use Geoff, I'm going blank, password. Okay, then I run my server again. Then I come back here, login. So, okay, we need to register this in the admin. Just a second, guys, we're almost done here. So admin, I can just come here and say admin.site.register. Then we need to register 
the models, which is the student model. We need to register this and we need to, I don't know if we can be able to import, no. So from dot um, models import student, we can also, yeah, classroom, and we, oops, classroom. Okay, save that, let it refresh. So if I come here, and I'm going just to Google some emojis, um, get emoji to copy and paste. So if I copy this, um, I come here to create a student. Uh, I add a student, uh, first name, I'm just going to use my details. And for example, I put this emoji here. Actually, let me put like five. Uh, admission number, I say one, two, three. Um, so if I save and continue, oops. Uh, huh. For some reason, the username is not working. Let me see why. Um, model student, super student save. Uh, Self dot slug. Oh, we gave this the wrong field. So this is supposed to be self dot username. Okay, sorry for that, guys. Self dot username. Okay, so if I save and continue editing, you will see that it's generated the word Geoffrey, but he's escaped all these emojis. So there's something we called auto escaping characters, and this is very common. So that means if somebody just decides because of their own, you know, craziness, their name is just, you know, a bunch of emojis, then you don't have a username. So one of the things, again, we can do with this is come and put a validator where we make sure that there's at least one character in the first name. And again, if you don't use something like hypothesis, it's so difficult to know until you deploy your app and somebody does something crazy, uh, you know, in the real world. Another use cases I've seen with this, especially with characters, and this is where hypothesis shines, is for example, you might expect that everybody will use your app uses English. So let's say they use Greek characters, or they use French special characters, or they use even use Arabic. You might find your app crashing all the time. So, and this is where hypothesis really shines. So in terms of characters, and I think we can do this when we start doing API views, uh, with uh, hypothesis characters, you can actually extend them quite a lot. So let me just do characters where you can come and define, you can come and define the, the various characters you want, whether you want Latin words to be included, whether you want some random, you know, emojis to be included or any other thing that you might want. Again, uh, Guys, thank you so much for following my tutorial series. In the next video, we are going now to start looking at uh, Django REST framework, the seri uh, serializers, API views, testing URLs, looking at authentication, uh, authenticating with tokens, for example, and looking at permissions to view some of these URLs, and everything now will take on from there. Again, this was the last tool or library that we'll be looking at. Now going forward, we'll actually be writing code and doing majority of the testing. And uh, we'll be doing less talking about what these, uh, what these actually do. Another thing, by the way, you can be able to test is, with, is for example, max length. I believe with characters, there's a max, I believe there's a max character value where you can set it, for example, to be in this case to be 50 and you can test characters above 50. And I think we'll add those as the tutorial series continues. So again, if you're following me for the first time, make sure to follow me in the various social media uh, platforms as listed. All the code that I'm doing is, list is on GitHub and you can also find it on my website in the link in the description below. Please feel free to ask me any questions down in the description and there's a community of developers now who are following this channel and will be able to answer you. Let's keep the discussion moving forward. If you would have 
any request that you of a topic that you want me to cover in a tutorial series, please let me know, comment about um, uh, other things that you might want from the channel and I'll be very quick uh, to get back to you again. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.